Hey, what's up guys? Jerome here from The Bonsai Supply. And if you guys are a subscriber already, thank you so much for your support and welcome back. Now, if this is the first time that you have come across this channel, I am so glad that you have found us and welcome. I hope that you guys consider subscribing to this channel. So today's video is going to be a little bit different than our regular content, but this is something that I have been very excited about for a very long time. So I'm on a very special mission here today. I'm actually in the Mojave Desert and I'm on a mission to find out where the best Yamadori junipers grow here in the wild. So I hope that you guys stick around to see what I find. So I have three different ideas of where the best junipers could be found. But first, let's talk about what a Yamadori is. Yamadori is Japanese and it literally translates into collecting plants from the mountains or the wild specifically. Now that we know what the term means, let's talk about why I'm in the desert. I'm in the Mojave Desert because this is where some of the best Yamadori junipers are found in the world. Other places include the Rocky Mountains, Sierra Nevada, Arizona and New Mexico. The junipers that are found here in the Mojave Desert are California junipers and they are very sought after for their extremely incredible and valuable deadwood. The trees here get absolutely beaten up by Mother Nature, such as sandstorms, the extreme heat, and the lack of water. Now, over the period of hundreds of years of abuse by Mother Nature, these trees get shaped into naturally dwarfed bonsais. Now, the Bureau of Agriculture estimates that these wild junipers thicken an inch per every 75 to 100 years. So we can easily measure the width of the trunk and see how old the tree is approximately. Alright, so if you look at this juniper right here, so this juniper is about two, maybe three feet tall, but then at the widest part here, it is about a foot wide. And so from the research that I have done, it says that one inch equals a hundred years in terms of juniper growth in nature. So since this tree is about 12 inches across right there, that means that this tree, even though it is just this short, is around 1200 years old. So now let's circle back to the three scenarios of where I think the best Yamadori junipers can be found. So scenario one is a desert floor where it is flat. Here I'm looking for a tree that is out in the open and is not protected by any rocks, trees or other brushes. So scenario two would be on top of mountain ridges where they are not protected from anything and get the full blast of mother nature. Now in scenario 3, I'm looking for the sides of hills or mountains where gusts of wind can swoop in and give the trees a hard time. So I'm traveling to all three scenarios and I'm trying to find out where exactly the best Yamadoris are going to be found. And for that job, I'm going to use a drone to help me locate some of these really gnarly and twisty trees. So something that I've realized really quickly is that once you find one juniper, you find an ocean full of the junipers. However, most of these junipers are either really big or they are not of interest. So meaning that they are either as big as this one, which you obviously clearly cannot collect, or they are just small bushes and there is not that much character to it. Now, in order for you to actually find these twisty trunks, you actually have to walk through these bushes and actually really, really explore. But those, trees that are good for bonsai are extremely hard to find. Now in other areas you might not find any junipers at all but you can find a lot of sage brushes for instance and sage brushes are really cool. Um, this is something that I have always heard of but I have not really encountered them in a the bonsai world at all but if you take a look at these right here they have they naturally these uh, sage brushes are smaller and so they're perfect size for bonsai and they're such twisted and they have so much character and they're so gnarly and those are almost easier to find than these big junipers however i have realized that after doing some research that these sage brushes are extremely hard to dig up because the tap root goes extremely deep down into the ground and the roots are very very brittle so you would actually have to spend a fair amount of time to dig one of these trees out. 
Of course, if you find a tree that's wedged in between a few rocks, you might actually uh, get up your chances of having the root ball closer to the tree than having to dig much further away from the tree to find all of these uh, feeder roots. So something really interesting that I have noticed here in the desert is that if you look at this mountain straight ahead, you see how it just has a few things on the very top and not a lot on the side. That means that this mountain here is not a good mountain to climb and see if it has good junipers or any other type of good plants on there. But if you fan a little bit to the right here, you can see how all of a sudden back there, that mountain, it almost kind of looks like ants. That mountain is completely covered with junipers. So you know that that one is a really good bat to go back there and climb that mountain and search for good junipers versus climbing this one or any of the other ones. So now the only thing is that once you find a mountain like that, that's out in the distance um, and it has these uh, green junipers on there and you know, wow, this mountain has junipers, you have to be prepared that you're going to be traveling on dirt roads like this for quite a long time and you're going to need to have a vehicle. So you need to have at least four wheel drive to get out there. And so we've already driven on this road for 10 miles and it's another 10 miles to get there. And we've already spent about 40 minutes on this road alone just because you cannot drive fast here and it gets very bumpy. And so you drive about 10 to 20 miles an hour and it's very far to get out there. So just be prepared for things like that. Now, there are areas like I showed you previously where I drove through neighborhoods and these junipers grew on either side of the road and you could just stop and see there were incredible trees. But you have to be very careful that you do not just go ahead and dig out in somebody else's backyard. Or since it's on the road, uh, the traffic is dangerous. Uh, also, you can get caught very easily unless, of course, you have permission. Now, if you go back to a mountain like, like back there, obviously, you don't have to worry that you're digging in somebody's backyard. But you are digging on the... Uh, BLM I think it's called the Bureau Land Management so you're digging on government land if you get a tree from there so that's something else to consider and there's a very long way to get out there it's just a few things to keep in mind all right so that that little dot down there is a car I came with and this is the mountain in question right here so what I thought was junipers actually turns out to be uh, pines and so this is one of the pines and it has naturally really small needles already. I don't really know exactly what kind of pine this is, but it has a gnarly trunk and some really good foliage already. Even this mountain right here is also full of pines. And this one as well. And this mountain is quite steep. So even if you were to find something up here, I don't know how you would actually make it back down. It would be quite rough. All right, so I didn't just come out here just to find out where the best Yamadori junipers grow. I also came out to see exactly the uh, environment around the junipers, right? Like, do they grow in a more sandy area or a rocky area? Do they grow on the mountain ridges? Do they grow on the side of mountains? Do they grow in fields where they are unobstructed? Uh, what are the surrounding vegetation? So if I go ahead and exhibit a tree in a few a, a California juniper specifically in an exhibition I might pair it with a, a rock from the desert or some sand or maybe a sagebrush or even a cactus so that's really why I came out here really to understand the junipers how they grow in their native environment right now to conclude this whole video when I first set out here into the desert I really had a lot in my head of where the best junipers could grow. And in my mind, I thought that they would grow, the best ones would grow on the sides of mountains where they would get beat up by mother nature, sandstorms and what not have you. But after being out here, I really found out that there's no such thing as the uh, as saying like the best juniper grows here or there because the vegetation changes so drastically out here in the Mojave Desert, meaning that Sometimes you're lucky and you can find an ocean of junipers, but all of these junipers are either gigantic or they are very small or not of interest at all. But then you might find 
an ocean of juniper where all of the junipers are gnarly and twisty and really exquisite and that might be in a neighborhood so <laughs> so that's really the conclusion that i came that i came up with that it doesn't really matter where the junipers grow in terms of ve vegetation or height or anything like that it really comes down to you either find a good batch or you don't and so yesterday for instance we spent the whole day out in the Mojave Desert and we couldn't find a single juniper, but we found a lot of sage brushes. But then on this morning, for instance, we drove through this neighborhood that I showed you the footage where the juniper just grow on the side of the roads and the elevation is very low. It's about 2,500 2, feet. So it's not that high. But then this morning, well, I should say early after that, <laughs> we went to a location where we went up to about 3,500 feet in terms of elevation. And there we only had pines and no junipers at all. So that's kind of the conclusion that I came up with here for. Now to finish off this video, I would like to remind you that this is an educational video. I do not recommend that you guys come out here and dig out any trees, especially if you don't have experience. And all of the trees that you find out here are very old and they have to be protected. And that's exactly why we don't share any locations with this video, as this is just educational purposes only. So, so I really hope that you guys enjoyed tagging along with me on this journey here to find out where the best Yamadori junipers grow. Now, please make sure that you comment below and let me know what you guys think of this video. Make sure that you subscribe, of course, if you haven't done so already. I mean, what are you waiting for? And I will catch you guys next time. Thank you.